Okay, we're given a function and we know that it has critical numbers at x equals 1 and x equals 4. We want to go through the second derivative test for extremes to figure out if those will be maximums or minimum values. So how we do this is we'd first take the first derivative. All right, so power rule a couple times is going to get us 6x squared minus 30x plus 24. All right, from here, how they actually get those critical numbers is they figure out when does this equal zero. We can do that by doing a little bit of factoring. So in this case, we would factor out maybe a six as a common factor for all of these terms, leaving us with x squared minus five x plus four. We can factor this a little bit further as that x squared part can split up as x and x. The four becomes one and four, and these would both have to be negative to make that negative five in the middle. All right, so from there, that's where they get our critical numbers. If you used x equals one in this first factor, x equals four in the other factor. So x equals one and x equals four, those are the critical numbers. Now they already gave us that information, but in case you were wondering how you could replicate that on your own, that's how you could do it. Next, we do have to find the second derivative. All right, for the second derivative test, obviously. So the second derivative, the derivative of the first derivative, is gonna be 12x, minus 30. Okay, so our test for the second derivative, it's going to be testing about concavity, right? Whether the function's concave up or concave down at 1 and 4 at our critical numbers. So how that works is you're going to use the second derivative, <clears throat> put 1 in first, 12 times 1 minus 30 works out to be negative 18. So what this tells us about the graph, this tells us that it is concave down at an x value of 1. So concave down graphs have this sort of look going to them, um, but our first derivative would equal 0, meaning we have a horizontal tangent line going across there. So it makes sense that this is going to be a maximum. All right, let's do something very similar with our 4. Replace it into the second derivative. So that'll be 12 times 4 minus 30. This works out to be a positive 18. It doesn't always happen to be the same number, just positive and negative. But what that tells us about our graph is it is concave up because it's positive value that came up, came out. Concave up looks like this on our graph. And again, we had a horizontal tangent line because the first derivative equaled zero at four. All right, so that goes with a minimum value on a graph. And that's how the second derivative test works. Let's see how if the first derivative test, how that kind of connects together with this if it supports our answer from the second derivative test. It definitely should. So what we do with the first derivative test is you're going to place 1 and 4 on the number line in the correct number line order. And then we're going to be plugging into the first derivative here. We're going to pick one value to the left, one value in the middle, and one value to the right in those sections of the number line. And then we're going to plug them into the first derivative and see what comes out. So the zero is probably the easiest that if we put it in for each one of these x's in the expanded version, each of those terms becomes zero, and we're gonna get positive 24. So positive 24, f prime of zero equals positive 24. It's positive though, that's the main takeaway here. If it's positive, then the graph is increasing, right? The first graph derivative tells us about increasing or decreasing. All right, let's do the same thing with two, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize the factored version. So the six, the x minus one, and the x minus four. So plugging that in, we get six, and then two minus one, and two minus four. Now I don't really care about what number comes out, just whether it's positive or negative. So this would be a positive multiplied by a positive multiplied by a negative. Well, that's two positives and a negative. Overall makes a negative, or tells us the graph is decreasing in between one and four. Okay, that supports that at one, when you go from increasing to decreasing on a graph, that's gonna make that a maximum. All right, one more value to plug in, again, using the factored version. We get six, five minus one, five minus four. All right, so positive, 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 bunch of positives, multiply them, make positive. 
which on our graph tells us we're back to increasing in this section. Anything to the right of 4. There was nothing special about 5 except for that it was on the number line to the right of 4 in that section. You could have plugged in 100, you'd also get positive. All right, but when we change from decreasing to the left of 4 to increasing on the right of 4, that supports what our second derivative test told us, that we're going to have a minimum value at a, a minimum at an x value of 4. Hope this helps out as you uh, work on understanding our derivative tests. It's good to know both of them.